welcome back to this week's episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. Uh, up this week, we will be working on a number 41 Lesney Matchbox 4 GT Racer. Um, as you can see, I have one of my Mint in Box examples here. Uh, very lucky, very fortunate to have this model in my collection. Um, this is all original, with the original tires, uh, which suffer from the problem that a lot of these models do, and that is that they are loose and they come off. Um, I've got an idea for how I think I might be able to fix that that I may attempt in a future episode. Um, but as you can see, this is a pretty clean example. Um, doesn't have any uh, paint chips, deflections, uh, imperfections, anything. It's, it's about as pristine as I'd hope to find one. Um, and the box on this one is actually in pretty incredible shape as well. Um, I definitely paid up for this one, a lot more than the original 38 cent purchase price. Um, and I think I've referenced this on an earlier uh, episode that when I get a box like this, uh, even though it has a sticker like this um, that I could very easily remove, I tend to not want to. Um, I really, I think this kind of adds to the charm and character of this piece. Uh, it's kind of that nice nostalgic reminder of the fact that these are these were kids' toys um, and that, you know, most children bought these with their pocket money or maybe begging their parents or grandparents to buy them a model. Um, and so for my mint set here, um, I'd never want to remove that. Uh, to me, that's part of the history and tells the story of this model and this particular piece in my collection. Um, but I wanted to share that with everybody because uh, I think it's just kind of cool. So up for restoration today. Uh, you may have seen this in one of my mailbags, mail calls a few weeks back. Um, this is a very, very rough uh, Ford GT Matchbox, original box. Um, you can see it's had some some folds, some creases, we have some, some significant tears here. Um, and I purchased this box actually to go along with a restoration that I was working on. Um, I, I think I also referenced this in an earlier video. Uh, I've kind of taken this car through all the, the standard steps um, and I'm not gonna go through them uh, in a video because I think there's a lot of other car restorers out there uh, that have kind of beaten to death the process that we go through to do these. Uh, when I do some future car restorations, I'll go ahead and show the way that I do it, but um, it's fairly standard. We drilled the rivets, we replaced those with little button head um, hex screws, uh, and those are threaded now. Um, this has replacement rubbers uh, on the tires, um, and the only piece I have left to finish that uh, model restoration is the water transfers. Um, and I've seen in several of the models available online, uh, one of the more common um, sort of anomalies on this, and you'll see on the original box, this car is numbered six. There were occasionally cars that came out of the factory where this was inverted with the number nine. Um, according to most of the collector catalogs, that's not actually an error because it was so common. Uh, but I don't have a number nine car in my collection. So when I do my restoration uh, of this Ford GT, I want to make my own number nine factory error code on this. So we'll walk through how to do that as well. On this box, I, I really think um, my first step, just because it is really so wrinkled and in such bad shape, um, I'm going to try to press this just to flatten it out just to see what exactly it is that I'm starting from. I, I know, you know I've got some rips and tears and some areas that I'm going to have to repair, but um, really until I get this flat, it's really hard for me to uh, see exactly what all this is, this is going to need. So um, step one is going to be just to press this flat uh, with my hot iron method.
Okay, the box has had a chance to cool down now. Uh, one of the other things that I will often do when I iron and when I get all that uh, paper and cardboard heated up, um, when I take the iron off, I'll set something heavy on top of the box just to hold it flat while it cools. Um, it only takes a few seconds for that temperature to come down, but it seems to help kind of hold the shape of these things in that uh, flattened configuration. So um, I'm gonna do an evaluation on this box. As I look at it, I can see this crease down uh, the bottom side, and that's a fairly common spot on the side for it to do. And the reason that is, is if we look inside, that's actually where the box is glued together. So um, there's an inner flap on this side um, that gets glued to the face of that. So that's actually the joint on, on the outside of the box. Um, it's also a reason that I think it's fairly common to find tears through that uh, part of the box as well. Um, so in order to kind of keep that flat, uh, we may need to reinforce the inside of that part of the box. Um, I have a pretty nasty tear here. The thing that is good about this tear though is if you look, let's see if I can get close enough, all of the flaps, all the little pieces um, seem to still be intact. So I think if I can get that backed properly um, and get all those pieces to stick back down, I should be able to come pretty close to restoring all the printing and the artwork and that little line that runs around the outside there. Um, on this tear up on top, it's very much the same situation. Even though it's a pretty bad tear in the surface, um, all the bits are there. All the pieces um, are intact. They're torn, but they're not torn off. Um, and so I think if I'm careful and I do uh, that the way that I want to, I think I can salvage and maintain all those pieces as well. Um, when I look at this end flap, it's actually very well attached. I don't even have anywhere on the inside. Um, the problem with this piece really is just that it's been crushed about a hundred different directions. Um, so the cardboard here is very soft. It's not ever going to stay flat on its own. Um, not without a little bit of reinforcement. And so I think for this flap, that's actually what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna put a, a little patch of paper tape in there that will allow me to, you know, redo the creases for the end flap and for the end of the box. Um, and the, the little tab out here. Um, and that will reinforce this, this cardboard that's kind of been crushed and bent um, and ripped every which direction. Um, and this other flap actually looks pretty good other than another tear right there. So this will also repair with our same method. Um, so I've got a feeling that by the time I finish all the different repairs in this box, when we look inside, we're probably gonna see more paper tape than uh, original box. Um, but again, I don't mind doing those types of a repair on a box that's starting out in as bad a shape as this one is. Um, you know, this is something that I think a lot of people would have probably looked at and just tossed in the trash and said, you know, it's too far gone. Um, there's no saving that. Um, and I've done boxes, I've restored boxes that were in far worse condition than this. Um, and I have a few more that I'd like to do on the channel here that, um, that are significantly worse than this. So this may be the roughest one uh, that I've attempted on film and for the channel. Um, but I, I definitely think that this is doable. So to repair those sections of the box, uh, again, I'm gonna cut off a section of a paper tape. Um, links for where to get this are down in the description. Um, you can order it. I think mine came from Amazon and I ordered like a thousand feet or so uh, for a very reasonable price. So in order to do our first repair, which I figured I would start with this kind of crushed end flap because I think that's gonna be a fairly straightforward um, repair to make and will kind of get us started on the right foot. Um, so I've lined up the factory edge of the tape with the edge of the box here. 
and then just folded that edge right over. So that gives me kind of a guide for where to cut, um, how wide my repair piece needs to be. So I'm gonna trim just on the inside of that fold. And then I wanna do a test fit before I trim it up anymore. Um, and really what I'm looking for is just that it fits tight to the inside of the box um, and that there's not any um, rolls or wrinkles in there. And this one seems to fit pretty good. Um, normally, and you'll probably seen in some of my earlier videos, um, I would trim this off, but due to the nature of just how rough this tab is and even really into the surface of the box here, um, I'm not gonna do that on this one. In fact, I'm actually kind of looking at this going, you know, maybe it's not long enough. Um, but the other thing I wanna consider is that this is not the only repair I have to make on this box. If you look down at this other end, I've got another bad tear here and another bad tear here. So what I wanna do is make sure that my new repair stops short of where I may want a future repair to go. And so if I look at that, I'm already pretty much there um, with the current length of this paper tape. So I'm happy with this size. I'm gonna go ahead and dampen it up a little bit. Again, I just use a normal kitchen sponge. You wring it out, you don't want um, all of the water out of it. You need a little, little bit of moisture to activate the tape, um, but you don't wanna go too wet. Uh, you, you can actually wipe all of the glue off. This does get very, very sticky once it's set. So as soon as I get it wet, I tend to like to take it over with a pair of tweezers. And then I wanna take our crushed flap, which is this piece here. I'm actually gonna lay it flat. And as I work that paper down, um, I actually, in this case, I'm trying to line it up with the inside edges of the box because this one we trimmed so tight that I wanna make sure that it really follows that crease down the inside edge of the box. So I've got it pretty well aligned on this side. So we're gonna bring it across and make sure that I'm right, right down in the crease, right where I wanna be. I got lucky on that one. I don't always hit these on the first time out the gate. Um, you don't see all of the bloopers and the retakes uh, when I shoot these, so um, definitely have had to uh, peel these off and start over. When that happens, if you, if you don't stick it the first time, uh, just because this glue is so incredibly sticky, um, you'll have to really get it wet to get the glue to let go. Um, and so it's just a matter of taking your, your damp sponge um, and really saturating the back side of it. Um, I want to get just a little moisture on this because I'm not trying to remove it, but if I needed to remove it, um, all I'd need to do is just get it really wet um, and that will get that glue to let loose. So the next piece I think that I want to tackle um, are the rips and tears on this end. Um, so I'm going to need another piece of our paper tape. And in this case, I'm actually cutting a fairly large piece because I think the best way to hit this repair um, instead of doing individual pieces is actually going to be to to try to wrap kind of all the way around both of those tears with one uh, solid piece um, of paper tape and so what I want to do is look inside my box kind of you know how far past that tear does my previous repair come um, and then on the outside of the box, I'm gonna follow pretty much the same method that I've been doing. Um, but what I wanna do is kind of line up where I think that belongs. So as you can see, I've overhung it on the end of the box here. That's kind of my guide for where to trim off the end of this tape. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna short it just a little bit. I'm gonna pull it in past the edge um, because we're measuring on the outside of the box and this is actually gonna to need to go on the inside of the box. Um, the other thing that I wanna do is I actually wanna flip this so that the sticky side 
is out um, on my piece. So um, what I'm gonna do is come up, and that still needs to be trimmed up, trimmed up a little bit. So come back to this sign. That looks good. I'm gonna come just past our repair. I'm gonna come just on the inside. And then I'm gonna fold it around. And the reason that I, I turned it right way around to get the adhesive sticky side on the outside is I want these folds to match up with where the folds in the box will be. So as you can see, that's where I started it. I'm winding up my edges to keep that fold nice and straight and square to my factory edge of the tape. Um, and you can see we're doing this all um, while this is dry uh, because you, once you get this wet, uh, you, you really don't want to be messing with it anymore. So the next piece to do is to kind of line that up on the box. Um, I'm going to short it again just slightly because this has to fit inside of the box. And I'm gonna fold down this other edge. So now what that's done is it's given me a section of the tape with a fold on each end that matches the width of the surface of the box. And again, I don't crease that hard. I just kind of want to give a suggestion of where it's at. Then what I'm going to do is line up the two factory edges of the tape. So I make sure that this is coming down straight and square when I crease it. As you can see, this edge is not straight. Um, kind of curves up and that's okay because this is the edge that's actually going to hang out of the box. So um, we've got our first two creases uh, which will come up one side across the face of the box and now we need our last crease which comes down the other side. So again, I'm going to short that a little bit, get some idea where that crease is, I'm going to line up on the back side, those factory edges. And we'll crease that hard. And that should be all the way around that box. Um, now, as you can see, I'm mainly concerned with these two sides and I have a slight tear here that's going to take a future repair, so um, past that last joint, I actually want to cut off that remaining piece of tape um, because otherwise it will be in the way of our next repair and I really dislike having to do a paper tape repair over another paper tape repair. Um, so the next bit to do will be to test fit this inside of our box. and. As you can see, because we shorted those a little bit, um, that this fits inside of the original box. Um, if we had just folded it all the way around the outside, when you tried to test fit this, it would actually um, not fit because it would be a bit too large to line up. But this one looks to be pretty good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet our paper tape and get it uh, ready to place. So to activate our glue, I'm gonna get my kitchen sponge just slightly damp. Um, and you'll see, I only go over this just a few times each direction. That's enough. And then in this case, I wanna grab this middle section because that's actually what we're gonna be trying to line up with our top flap here. Um, so I'm gonna lay that flat and side flaps out of the way. And as you can see, there's kind of a line on the inside where our previous repair ended. And so I'm gonna to try to make this as seamless as possible. And I'm gonna to try to line up both pieces of paper tape on the inside of the box. So kind of doing that by feel because it's all the way on the inside. All right, now while this is still really wet and sticky, I want to try to very, very carefully arrange 
these outer flaps in the box to make sure that everything lines up, the artwork lines up, um, make sure my O is continuous on my Matchbox logo there. And then I wanna do the same on this other end. Um, so as you can see, like if I pull that too far, um, that that artwork doesn't quite match up. So I wanna get as close as I can Make sure that both sides of that box line up where they need to be. This is had overnight to set now. Our uh, paper tape is completely dried and set. Um, if you look, I wanted to show kind of the detail of some of these little surface issues. Uh, you can see when the box tore, it kind of created a few of these little flaps. And these flaps are not stuck down to the paper tape. There's another issue up here where you can see kind of that surface is um, still peeled back. So those are uh, the next repairs that we're gonna make. I'm gonna use some regular Elmer's white school glue and just apply some very small amounts uh, sparingly to those areas that need to be uh, repaired. Now that our glue has had a chance to kind of set along this area that we repaired, I want to be really, really careful when I bend this for the first time because I know that that tear runs right along the bend. So as I open this up, I want to be very, very careful and just sort of gingerly bend along that edge of the box and make sure that all those areas that I glued down are still intact because um, I don't want to undo um, all the repairs that we just made. So I try to make sure that that stays stuck as I bend it. And that actually looks like it's holding pretty good. Um, it's very important to be patient through this and I'm not naturally a patient person. So it's, it's taken me doing several of these repairs to kind of gain some of that patience that I knew I would need. Um, next, we're gonna tackle this little flap up here. Uh, we're gonna use, again, same method, just a little more glue on the end of my pick. The glue's had a couple hours to dry now. Um, so the next task to tackle is this 
main end flap here. This is just torn probably about halfway across. Um, so I've cut a fairly good size piece of my paper tape. Um, looking at this flap, again, this end tab is, is pretty well adhered. I don't think I need to go all the way to the end with it. Uh, I will probably try to make this joint happen right here in the fold. Uh, but I do want to come back uh, pretty far into the face of the box, which is why I've cut the larger piece. Uh, and my reasoning uh, for doing that is this particular box has a lot of uh, creases and folds and bends along this face. So even though this artwork looks fairly good, um, it's very uh, worn. And so I'm looking to kind of reinforce that a little bit. And so I think by running the paper tape, kind of the full length of that box and through that repair, I think will be much better. So I'm actually going to line this up and I can come back and trim off this end. So I'm gonna overhang it a little bit. I'm gonna run it up this edge and then make my fold in the paper tape. So I know where to cut my piece. I'm gonna cut right on the inside edge of that fold, just so we're slightly smaller and I know it'll fit in my box. And then let's do a quick test fit. So I actually want to run this piece from all the way here, all the way up to some point up here. Um, so I actually have enough in this piece that I could come all the way out onto this end flap as well. And kind of looking at this corner, I think maybe that is a better idea. Maybe I, I want to run it all the way instead of um, stopping it short. So I think I'm just going to go with this piece as is. Um, you might see me kind of doing this reverse bend a little bit. Before I get this wet, I want to give it some shape, some little bend that's going to make it easy for me to put into the box once it is wet. So that's all I'm doing here is putting a little roll in that paper, kind of make it easy for me to slip in the box. Um, I also want to get my box set up on you know which direction I'm going to be feeding it in. So we'll set our box up there so it's ready to go. And I'm just going to damp, dampen that kitchen sponge or with a kitchen sponge, paper tape. Come kind of each direction. Make sure I get. Good coverage. Grab it with my pliers. Now I can feed it down in there. Again, on these, I actually want to start on one side, make sure we're kind of lined up from there, and then running all the way down inside of that box. And then I'm going to slowly work it over from that one side that I've got straight across into the other side. So you can see I've actually got it a little crooked there. Um, I think I might, might try to adjust that a little bit still. And anytime you need to adjust this, it's fairly simple just to uh, get it wet, get that glue to let loose and then we can peel it back. Without damaging the original box. Okay, that's much better. I definitely wanna look down this other end, make sure that I'm still okay on this end as well. You can see I'm actually got I have an edge that's kind of probably larger than it needs to be down here. So I think I'm gonna try to pop that loose and do it again. I could probably cut all this out. You know, I think showing your mistakes 
sometimes it's just as important as uh, all your successes. I've been pretty lucky with these so far. I, I haven't had very many that went wrong, so you know, first time for everything. I'm still gonna try to reuse the same piece of paper tape, but I think I actually, from what I measured it, I think I got it wrong way around when I tried to put it in. So, I'm gonna try this again, coming in from the other direction. See if I can get it lined up with the edges of the box first, and then out onto my flap. And that actually looks much better this time. I think I've got pretty even coverage all the way. Got a nice straight line up on the inside of the box there, so I'm gonna try to press this, get it all flat, um, and then we'll let this dry and we'll come back and trim it up. This has now had a few more hours uh, for all of the glue to dry, all of the paper tape to really set up. Um, so we're ready to start trimming off some of those extra areas. And I usually just do this with a pair of scissors. As I said in an earlier video, you can kind of, in that joint, you can set or rest the edge of your scissor on the cardboard uh, from the original box so that as we're cutting, we're very, very close to the original box, but we're not actually cutting any part of the original flap off. We're just using it to kind of give us a guide and follow that line as we trim up all of the excess around these flaps. And there are quite a few tight little areas on these boxes where maybe a larger pair of scissors like this just don't work really well. And when I get into those areas, I actually have little tiny baby pair of scissors that I like to use. So that actually lets me get much, much closer to what I'm working on. And these are very sharp. I think these are actually out of a, like a nail um, servicing kit. So they're very sharp and they work very well and give me the ability to get in kind of super tight with some of these areas on the box that are a little bit more difficult to work in. That trimmed up. I need to come back along this edge. So these inside edges are really kind of tough to get at sometimes because you've got all these flaps that are in the way. All right, so that finishes up this end of the box. We've got both of our flaps and our end flap done. So the last remaining bit we have to complete this restoration is I want to add back on the hood decal that's missing from this now restored model. And as you can see in the original box, um, the hood decal would have gone on the number six on the hood. Um, I have a mint condition original with the number six, but one of the common variants uh, that's pretty easy to find is one where this was actually reversed. And so instead of showing as a six on the hood, it shows as a nine. I haven't yet been able to find an original one to pick up. Um, so when I decided to do this restoration on this uh, vehicle, I decided that I was gonna try to make my own factory error. Um, I don't know that it's even really listed as an error because it is so common to find those cars with the reversed uh, 
water transfer. So to start, I'm gonna let that soak a little bit. Um, I do wanna take the surface of this and prep it. So I'm gonna add a few drops of water onto the hood of my car. Just to make sure that I've got a little bit more working time once I put that water transfer on. Let's see if this has had a chance to go soft yet. Looks like we're still pretty, pretty well stuck. There we go, now we're moving just a little bit. That up Get as close as we can I just use my fingers most of the time I think your your sense of touch is probably for most people one of your best strongest senses kind of started at one end and just run it right down the car We got that on pretty, pretty straight for a first, first run at it. So now again, I'm using just a damp Q-tip to kind of work out some of that water, and I'll kind of roll it to help that decal set onto the surface of the car. The last step that I always do with any decal that I apply is I want to top it off with a little bit of uh, Tester's number 8804 decal set. Um, this really makes sure that you know whatever happens, if I want to clear coat over this to protect it, uh, that that decal is not going to move. Again, it doesn't take very much. I usually just use a Q-tip. Um, or small paintbrush, and I'll apply that decal set once the decal has had, you know, a few minutes to dry completely. I really want to make sure I get that around the edges. Um, it helps prevent the edges of the decal from peeling up. And I believe it's just a mild acid that's in that decal set, but sort of dissolves the decal onto the paint and makes sure that it's really good and set. So I always do a top coat of the decal set to finish um, any water slides or transfers that I apply. Um, I need to get a smaller one of these. Obviously this is somewhat overkill for the job, but it does work, it does accomplish its intended purpose. So what I'm going to do is line up. You can kind of see on both sides of the flap that I get the that straight edge aligned with where the original bend in the box was. And now I can bend that down over that hard straight metal edge to make sure that that right there is where I want my crease. And then move Let's go ahead and do this end flap here. Get that creased as well. And we'll rotate our box over. Do this side flap. And we'll do our main flap as well. Make sure that that is going right where that original bend in the box occurred. So we'll do the other end. Line this edge up. All the way across. Good strong crease on there. That looks good. Open up my box in every direction. Now we 
we've got all of our creases back in our original flaps. Oh, I forgot the uh, end here. Do that real quick. Flap. All right. Line that up on the crease. Looks good. Now we'll bend. Bend that down. As well. All right. Looks pretty good straight all right so now we can reassemble our box We've got all of our bins made all of our flaps are secure it's in there really nice and tight looks pretty good and then we'll take our finished Restored Ford GT, put it back in our new box, new restored box, our end flaps in, and that completes the restoration of our matchbox number 41 Ford GT Racer. As always, folks, don't forget to like and subscribe here on our YouTube channel to get all of our future updates and future videos. Um, I've also gone ahead, uh, I had a few people ask me if I was going to do a Facebook page. So I've gone out and I've also started a Facebook page for us just to give us another uh, place online where we, we can exist and you can follow us and keep up with what we're doing. Um, so I'll put a link in the video description where you can like and connect with our Facebook page, get all of our most recent updates. I may actually do a couple of special events um, out there, maybe some giveaways as well on our, our YouTube or on our Facebook page um, that won't be on the YouTube channel here. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I do listen and read all of the comments that come through. So let me know what I'm doing right. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. I'd love to hear from you.